Joey Bishop, Paul Lynn, Michael Landon, Abby Dalton, Charlie Weaver, Connie Stevens, Wally Cox, Nanette Fabre, and Buddy Hackett, all in the Hollywood Square. And here is the master of the Hollywood Squares, Peter Marshall. Thank you very much, Betty Williams. Hi there, welcome to the nighttime edition of the Hollywood Squares, and hello, stars. Hi, Hi Peter. Peter Marshall. I have a feeling this should be a fun night. I'll tell you, Buddy Hackett has brought his buddy, Joey Bishop, and that's nice. And Cuddy <laughs> Stevens is with us, Michael Landon from Bonanza, and, and our regulars, and uh, Paul Lynn, and that's uh, Wally Charlie Say. Let's say hello to uh, Joyce Emerson, and welcome to the Hollywood Squares, Joyce. Good luck. <laughs> Joyce is a mother, hang on, gang, a mother of six from Phoenix, who works nights. That's what it says right here. <laughs> now, what do you do? It doesn't say it what. <laughs> I know. That's, well, I'm an I, operator. You're an operator? Would you be a little more specific? <laughs> Well, Would you clarify uh, that, please? Catalog operator. A catalog operator? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Joyce. All right, now, let us welcome Brent Stoner. Hiya, Brent. Welcome to Hollywood Square. Good luck. Brent is a, um, an industrial designer and former Olympic ski racer. That's oh, really? correct. How did you do in the Olympics? Uh, I broke a leg. <laughs> well, that's good luck, isn't it? When they, uh, yeah, that's what they say. Well, break a leg on our show tonight. That's good, good luck. luck. They say go break a leg. All right. right. Say, we'll play the me. first round of Hollywood Squares with Joyce and Brent in just a second, so don't go away. <laughs> the object for Joyce and Brent is to get three stars in a row, either across, up, and down, or diagonally. It is up to them to figure out if the stars give me a correct answer or making one up. That's how they get the squares. Every game is worth $300. In addition, in our first two games, we play with the secret square. If one of the contestants uh, picks the secret square and they are correct, this is the prize they will receive. A trip around the world for two. We'll fly you via Pan American, Pan Am, world's most experienced airlines. First on the Atlantic, first on the Pacific, first in Latin America, first round the world. Pan Am makes the going great. And first in the hearts of our country. Let's show the home audience the secret square. In round one, I understand, Brent, you won the uh, toss backstage, right? That's correct, I did. Uh, pick a star. Joey Bishop wants to know if he's won anything yet. We haven't even started, Joey. <laughs> Can I just say something? Well, certainly. I've been doing my show for 49 weeks, mm -hmm. and I said to my agent, I have to get a rest. I gotta go somewhere where nobody will see me. I wanna thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I got news for you. If they don't have a good movie opposite up there, I would be watching this up there. Go ahead, Brent. All right, Joy, they're gonna look at you again. I'll take Joy. All you. right, could be the secret square, but no? When a Boy Scout meets his tenderfoot requirements, how is he honored? How is he honored? Mm -hmm. This is after he has helped an old lady across the street, even if she doesn't want to go. Could be. I think he then receives the Boy Scout pin, and on it is engraved the motto, Be Prepared. I agree with you. Good start. Put an X up there. Very good, Joyce. Joyce? Thank you. Connie Stevens this evening say two stars of the current TV season appeared together in a 1963 TV series called Arrest and Trial. One was Chuck Connors. Who was the other star? Oh, that was, uh, let me see, Charles Bickford. I'm going to agree with Connie. It was Ben Kazara, and uh, X gets the square. You I know, think, if you yeah. are incorrect, the X gets the square. Your opponent does less and gets the three in a row. So, Brent, a break for you, sir. I'll buddy hack it. Okay. Uh, could you repeat the question? <laughs> I thought I projected quite well. I was talking to Connie, and I didn't hear Oh, I see. Him. Say, why do sailors wear bell-bottom trousers? Because they look funny in skates. <laughs> Really let them have it. Wah! <laughs> they wear bell-bottom trousers because on the ship it's very convenient. If you fall in the water, you got to get your trousers off quickly. Uh, also, when you swab the decks, you got to roll them up. It's a convenient thing to wear. I disagree with you. You're wrong. Uh -huh. <laughs> now hear this. 
But he was right. Circle gets the oh. square. And a break for Joyce Emerson. Joyce? Uh, I think I'll go with Abby Dalton. Abby? <laughs> Hi, Abby. Oh, yes, well, I, you hadn't spoken to me. You never even acknowledged me. In the oh, yes, opening. I did. No, no, I'm sorry. If you'll, go, if you'll run the tape back. <laughs> <laughs> this is for a trip or two around the world via hurt. Pan Am. Remember, only you can win. If you're wrong, the prize will go over to our next Secret Square game. Special envelope. Listen carefully. What was the name of the famous mob leader who engineered the St. Valentine's Day Massacre? Was it Dutch Schultz, Al Capone, or Bugs Moran? Who, who was engineered? Yeah, he was engineered? the leader of... Uh, the leader. Mm -hmm. Of the group, yes. I, I guess it would have to be Al Capone. He did all those other <laughs> bad things. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you, Abby. Uh, Capone's men uh, were thought to be the victims of a plot masterminded by George Bugs Moran. Man. She is incorrect. Oh. You did not win the secret square. <laughs> and X gets the square. The secret square was not won. So in our next game, we'll add the trip to the new prize. Don't fret, like Joyce. You can win them both. What is it, Joy? When I answer a question correctly and yeah. I get a next, uh -huh. there will be no more questions asked of me, right? At this particular game, that's Does right. Does it seem a little stupid for me to remain here? <laughs> well, uh, listen, uh, you know, uh, you could dance or sing or something, I guess. But dance uh, or sing? I have no pants on. Are you <laughs> 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 You could do your Al Jolson impression. That wouldn't, they wouldn't know that. All right, on with this game, and it is uh, <laughs> Brent's uh, turn. Charlie Weaver, please. <laughs> Say, Chuck, when hitting the ground in a parachute, is it best to close your eyes or leave them open? <laughs> well, I know it's best to close your legs. Best to, uh... We will now see trout fishing on horseback. <laughs> Charlie, your, uh, your answer, please, sir. Yes, I think it's best to close the show. Uh, yeah. uh, no, uh, uh, close your eyes. I disagree with you. You close them. If they're open, you might tense up. <laughs> That's what it says right here. Circle, I know I would tense up. Circle gets the square. Joyce? Uh, I'll go with Michael Landon. I told you it's going to be a wild night. I have that feeling. Homer's Iliad is the story of what famous historical event? Uh, the marriage of the Cartwrights. Oh! <laughs> no, that's uh, the, the Trojan War. Well, I'll agree with you, Michael. Well, he is absolutely correct for the circle there. Thanks, Dennis. I have to go to Wally Cox to block. To block diagonally? If you were looking for a saber-toothed tiger today, where would you look? <laughs> Down here on uh, Wilshire Boulevard. <laughs> you Josh it. I don't have a good sense of direction in this oh. building. Why don't they open the windows there? <laughs> All right. Uh, Saber-toothed tiger. I would look in the past era. Uh, in the Pleistocene, perhaps? No. Quarter tertiary? Tertiary period. <laughs> I would look... Uh, Why would you do that, Wally? Because <laughs> they, they are no longer extant. They are extinct not extent. I agree with you. Uh, they are now extinct. You have to look at a museum. We'll put an X there, and you have a block, sir. All right? Okay, Joyce. I'll go with Nanette Bebre. To block from left to right. All righty. Who named Cleopatra Queen of Egypt? Richard Burton. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, you mean, you mean, oh. Yeah. Um, it was um, the first lover. Uh, Caesar. I disagree. Caesar, Julius by name. X does not get the square. We'd give you three in a row. The third one you must earn yourself. Uh, an app for break. That's the idea. $300 right here. True or false? Divorce is illegal in Italy. Well, I thought a marriage was illegal in Italy. <laughs> Anytime. Divorce is illegal in Italy? True or false? Well, you can get an annulment, but I don't think you can get a get a divorce under special circumstances. I would say, I would say, what was the question? <laughs> divorce is illegal in Italy. True or false? I would say that's true. I'll agree with you. That's good. You have three hundred dollars. Put the X right there. <laughs> The 
player who wins the most cash during the show gets a special bonus prize. You'll see that later. Now let's begin round two. This is the prize for another big secret square, and Miss Circle will start this round. I'll start with Charlie. Oh, um, oh, just a second. We have to, first of all, find out uh, what you're going to win if you pick the secret square. Uh, Kenny? Yes, it's a new 1968 Pontiac Firebird. Enjoy wide tracking, the great American sport in this new 68 Pontiac Firebird convertible, where beauty, power, and thrilling performance are yours to command. Plus that trip for two around the world via Pan Am. Well, uh, let's show the home audience the secret square. It could be Charlie Weaver. You chose him. Let's see, uh, uh, look at this. They're watching at home. Okay, Joyce. Charlie Weaver. You're still going to stick with Big Chuck. No? <laughs> where did Washington say his famous farewell to his staff? Uh, you mean Big George? Yeah. You mean uh, over the Potomac, George? That's the guy. <laughs> you know, he threw a dollar clear across Potomac? Yes, I you know. You can't do that anymore, because a dollar doesn't go that far. <laughs> uh, he said his goodbye in New York City. He wanted to send a telegram because he hated long goodbyes. <laughs> I'll agree with you. That's, uh, I believe it's Francis Tavern. Yes, uh, good start. <laughs> Circle gets the square. Brent, trip around the world. Connie at Firebird. It's up there somewhere. Uh, Connie Stevens, please. Is the state of Rhode Island really an island? No, it's not. I agree with you. It is not. Though it includes several islands, X gets the square. Joyce. Uh, Joey Bishop? Joey Bishop. I had a feeling Joey was the secret square, but he is not. Yes. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. Gesundheit. <laughs> Prego. <laughs> he recently announced that... Hey, he... uh, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> when the audience is laughing, you ain't supposed to continue to talk. <laughs> you gotta wait till the laugh dies. Now it's over. Now you can ask. I try to get it at the peak, Joey. There's no peak. That's why I say wait. <laughs> <laughs> Maharishi Mahesh Yogi recently announced that he can't stand the crowds in India. So he's moving to a less populated country. Where is he going? To uh, Santa Monica Beach on July the 4th. <laughs> to a less populated country? Yeah. I would have to hazard a guess. I would say he was going to Australia. I'll disagree. He's going to the United States of America. You disagreed. Yes? And put a circle right yeah. there. Uh, what time is it now? You come out of the game again, right? Where? Buddy Hackett's block. Do we hear Buddy Hackett? Oh. 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 oh, a few weeks What's ago. What happened down there? Uh, I'll tell you what happened. This is for a trip for two around the world via Pan Am. A 1968 oh, Pontiac God. Firebird. Remember, only you can win. We have a special envelope for this. Buddy, listen carefully. Okay. Wait a minute. What come were on, the bud. sounds? I... Does Joey really don't have pants on? <laughs> See, I don't know, buddy. Hey, there was a lot of noise up here. Did you burp, bud? No! I'm the secret square, and oh. electrodes went off on my backside. <laughs> Listen carefully. Brent, take your time on this. Who wrote the best-selling autobiography, The Heart Has Its Reasons? The Duchess of Windsor, Eleanor Roosevelt, or Ingrid Bergman? That was written by the Duchess of Windsor. I disagree with you. You shouldn't have. <gasps> oh, never disagree with Buddy. <laughs> the Duchess oh. of Windsor. The secret mm. square was not one. That's Firebird oh. and the trip around the world. Oh. Oh. But I tell you, we're all money. You could have reasoned it out. The bestseller, Ingrid Bergman never had a bestseller. Eleanor Roosevelt wouldn't write such a fancy title. That's who I thought it was. You thought it was Eleanor Roosevelt? Right. They will discuss this during the commercial because we have to jump That's off the That's why line. you're going to be traveling a lot on a bus. Say, we'll have more of the Hollywood Squares, Joey Bishop and Buddy Hackett right after this. Say, welcome back station. to the show. Say, uh, talks on top of every joke I do that uh, song. Joey, I'm awfully sorry, but the lights went on. When the lights go on, I usually sing or dance or talk or stuff. <laughs> Say, Brent, don't be too discouraged because the... The person with the highest cash total at the end of the show receives a special bonus prize. It's quite exciting, but you, young lady, have a chance for $300, so uh, go do it. Uh, I'll go with Buddy Hackett. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If your title were Extraordinary and Planipotentiary, uh, Planipotentiary, yes, what would your job be? If my... Title were Extraordinary and Planipotentiary. What would your job be, huh? Plenty potentiary. Potentiary. Well, golly, I'm not right 
half the time. I would be the uh, exalted grand leader of the Odd Fellows Lodge. The three hundred dollars. I'll agree. Plenty potentiary. I don't know what you're doing. You would be an ambassador to a foreign country, oh. and the X gets the square. I have Brent? the vaguest oh. idea what that is. A plenty potentiary. I couldn't even pronounce it. Buddy. I thought it was a fancy kind of eggplant. <laughs> I picked it up and I figured it was all kinds of trouble. Okay, Brent. Call in for six hundred dollars. For six hundred dollars, all righty. <laughs> How many men on a hockey team? About half. <laughs> <laughs> Including the puck. <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, you, sir, have an X and six hundred dollars. Very good. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Clear the board. Catch up time for Joyce Emerson. But Mr. X will start this round. Abby Dalton, please. Final potentiary. Say mumbles. Uh, could you contain yourself here? <laughs> if you scratch, and those giggles landed right next to boy, this is going to be a night, I'll tell you. It's terrible. I, it's not the worst to me. See, Abby, if you scratched while you and your partner were playing rotation, <laughs> what would you be doing? <laughs> Getting a divorce, I suppose. Uh, you scratched while you were rotating? No, no. <laughs> Please listen carefully. If you scratched while you and your partner were playing rotation, what would you be doing? The envelope, please. Uh, rotation. Yeah. I agree with you. Shooting pool. Circle gets the square. Joyce? I'll play pool. <laughs> I'll try Buddy Hackett again. Okay. He wrote The Side of Paradise, Tender as the Night, and the Pat Hobby stories. Who is this famous American author? Well, I know who wrote Tender as the Night because I was in the movie. What? No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> this way people say, well, I didn't see that picture. <laughs> was F. Scott Fitzgerald. I disagree. Oh, ho, ho, ho. He is right, and X gets oh. the square. Brent? I don't blame you for disagreeing. <laughs> Connie Stevens, please. If you mixed cornmeal with chicken and wrapped a corn husk around it, what would you have created? <laughs> a terrible I have a mess. mess. <laughs> chicken and cornmeal. Yeah, and, and wrap the corn husk around it. Corn husk? Mm hmm. Wouldn't be a uh, hush puppy. Well, let's find out. I don't know. I disagree with you, though. Uh, it would be a tamale. Uh, X gets the square. He disagrees. Joyce Emerson, mother of six. I'll have to go to Paul in the block. Paul in the block from left to right. The staff of life has been with us for ages. What is the staff of life? <clears throat> Yogurt. No, I, I, I think it's uh, the staff of life is bread. I agree with you. He is correct. Put the circle there. Right. <clears throat> Try and read it to me. If you were at the beach during neap tide, N-E-A-P, would it be high or low tide? Neap tide. Neap tide? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it your teeth bothering you again? Uh, no. no. <laughs> neap tide. Neap tide. Uh, you would be... <laughs> you'd be fishing for neap. You would be... Uh, You'd be at the high tide. I disagree with you. You'd be at the lowest tide. Neap tide. Doodle -doo 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 -doo. Put an he was right. Right? He was right. right. I'll have to go with Joey Bishop to block. Joey Bishop to block diagonally. Uh, in what profession would you take an oath beginning, I believe in boys and girls, <laughs> the men and women of a great tomorrow? In what profession? Yeah. 
Because if it was a show, I would have said Peyton, please. <laughs> You're starting with a profession. Would you repeat that, please? Yeah, I, I, I heard you before, but when I get a chance to talk, I think I'll take advantage of it. All right. I believe in boys and girls, the men and women of a great tomorrow. That but, would have to be the teaching profession. I'll agree. From the creed of principles for teachers and educators. Put a symbol there. Well, Connie said an obstetrician. <laughs> an obstetrician? That's a Connie no. <laughs> Michael Landon, the block place. I would have gone to Wally Cox to win $900. This may work out just fine. If you had a coat made from winter weasel fur, <laughs> would it be extremely valuable or relatively worthless? Winter weasel? Mm -hmm. Winter weasel fur. <laughs> uh, winter weasel would be... Uh... The, uh, would be an ermine. The ermine's fur, the weasel's fur is white in the winter, and it would be a, a quite valuable fur. I agree with you. Extremely valuable. Put an X right there. <laughs> Judge. Wally Cox. Wally Cox for uh, the block there. According to mythology, who lived in a palace made of spider leg walls, windows made of cat's eyes, and a roof of bat's wings painted with moonlight? Hmm. Let's see, uh... Paul Lind has a place like that. <laughs> but, uh, of course, that's uh, Paul's not all just mythology. Oh, really? No. I believe that would be your, uh, your average Tom Thumb. I'll agree. It's hard to build a big house. Uh, Tom Thumb, and you concurred. The king and queen of the fairies. <laughs> Next. X does not get the square, but give you three in a row. The third one you must earn yourself. Wally Cox to win, please. All right. <laughs> Who played the title role in the movie King Rat? I was up for the part, but... Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of politics there. Uh, that would be... Uh, uh, I know, George Siegel. Right. Because he laughs good. Right. So you must have seen a movie. Yes, that's right. X gets the square. You still have $900. Thank you, Wally. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if the show should end in the middle of a game, we'll give our players $50 for each square they have on the board, which is very important because it will count for their cash total and the big bonus prize at the end of the show. Joyce, I want you to win some money here. I believe you start this round, don't you? Am I uh, correct in assuming that? Good. Okay. Joyce? I'm going to try Michael Landon. Say, Giggles, who wrote the hit musical comedies Lady Be Good and Strike Up the Band? Was it George Gershwin, Irving Berlin, or Rogers and Hart? Uh, George Gershwin. I'm going to agree. Circle gets the square. He is right. And we'll be back. We'll be back with more of the Hollywood Squares in just a moment. Sorry, friends, are Say, players, time is up. Joyce, you have $50 <coughs> for one square in the last game, but no one goes with less than $100, so we award you $100. Oh, thank you. I and, enjoyed uh, it. I wish it could have been more. But you had kind of a chance at several times. Right, I sure Say, did. Brent, three games for nine hundred dollars. You had the shot at that trip around the uh, world of the Pontiac, too. <laughs> and you said you'll never disagree. You are the cash never. winner, and that means you'll get the bonus prize. This is exciting. Listen. From RCA, the Gloucester Home Entertainment Center, inspired by colonial pieces of the federal period, with 23-inch color tube, FM, AM, and FM stereo radio, That's studiomatic four-speed changer, and dynamic six-speaker sound. That's exciting. Say, stars, thank you for making this a fun evening. Don't miss the Hollywood Squares next Friday night, also daytime at 11.30 Eastern Time, 10.30 Central Time. Peter Marshall thanking all of you, and uh, good night. As a memento of the show, each contestant will receive a home version of the Hollywood Squares game. Our reference goes for questions and answers is the 20-volume 1968 edition of the World Book Encyclopedia, containing more than 12,000 pages and representing the work of 2,500 consultants and contributors. A Jackson Pollock painting once sold for $10.5 million. A Picasso self-portrait was bought for over $43 million. A Japanese businessman paid $82.5 million for a Van Gogh. Tim drew this and won five grand. It pays to be an artist. Win, lose, or draw today at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, only on Game Show Network.
has been pre-recorded.